This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and this is the HTC Aria, AT&T's second Android phone. This runs Android OS 2.1 Eclair and it has HTC Sense UI enhancements. If you're familiar at all with Android and HTC Sense, you'll know that means the big clock with weather over here. These little handy shortcuts here to phone, program launcher, add widgets. Several home screens. We have Favorite speed dials here is one of the available widgets. There's also one for Friendstream and uh, for Peep, for your Twitter feed. Here we've got the email widget, the SMS widget, the weather widget. The HTC Aria sells for $129 with the contract, which makes it quite affordable. And it has a 320 by 480 pixel 3.2 inch capacitive multi-touch display. So it's not a super phone, we don't have that 800 by 480 resolution, but there's a reason for that, because this is supposed to be a small, pocketable phone, and you couldn't possibly fit that kind of resolution in a small piece of glass. Let's compare it to a large phone right here. This is the HTC Evo on Sprint, and you can see the difference in size. The Aria is something that's easy to carry around compared to the Evo. And now we'll compare it to the iPhone 3GS. And it's even considerably smaller than that. In terms of thickness, they're not so far apart. The Evo has a 600 megahertz CPU, and it's quite responsive. It may not be a 1 gigahertz Snapdragon processor or a Hummingbird processor, but it's quite fast, and the device never lags. You can see if you pop off the back that surrounds all the edges, you got bright yellow here. HTC likes doing that lately. Like the Evo was red inside, and so was the Incredible, for example. You have translucent yellow here for your micro SD card slot. The card is included in your SIM card slot. This is the battery. And these are the screws. These are three prong, not Phillips head screws, that hold the device together, we assume. It's the power button up top. These are a 3.5mm stereo headset jack. AT&T actually includes the headset in the box. Camera right here, speaker grill. This is a small speaker and the speaker is not very loud and is kind of tinny. And on this side right here we have the volume control button, so fairly simple. These are touch sensitive buttons, they're not mechanical, which is quite nice. And then we have this incredibly teeny optical D-pad here, which does work just fine, though it's really small. You can see with HTC Sense, the latest version of it, if you do that, you can get a view of all of your home screens right here. So you don't have to scroll through across seven of them. Anyone you're interested in, you just tap on it and there it is. The phone has AT&T Navigator powered by Telenav, and it also has a new application right here, AT&T Maps. Now that's free, it gives you uh, directions on screen, but it doesn't do spoken directions. If you tap on the Navigate button, it will then launch AT&T Navigator, which is a pay-for service with a month monthly subscription fee of $9.99. So here we are inside of AT&T Maps. As you can see, I've mapped out a, uh, a route that I want to take here, and you do get information like traffic on the major freeways, that kind of thing. See, if you want to zoom in and zoom out, you're going to have to use the plus and minus, though this is a capacitive multi-touch display. This particular application does not support pinch zooming. And if you hit the Navigate button over here, it will take you to AT&T Navigator to get spoken turn-by-turn -turn directions. That is, if you subscribe to that service, otherwise you won't be able to do that. Phone also supports other AT&T services. We've got Mobile Video, formerly known as CV here, which works just fine. And we've also got Moby TV here, which is a pay-for service, so you can watch on-demand TV channels. That's different from the Qualcomm Flow TV with, that uses a TV antenna and over-the-air broadcast. This actually just uses your data connection. Other AT&T applications include the AT&T Hotspots over here and their mobile banking application. They haven't gummed it up with too much of the usual AT&T bloatware, though, so it's pretty pleasing. Beyond that, we have all the standard Google applications on here. We have Google Maps. We've got Google's new news application. Gmail, of course, the usual email clients on here. Facebook's pre-installed. 
stock application. If you haven't seen that, we'll take a look at that. And you can customize this and put whatever stocks you want on here. And we've got the YouTube player, which we'll take a look at. We'll do this over AT&T's 3G connection. The phone is, is a good reception. It's not stellar and it's not bad. It's a little bit better than average, I would say. It's a little bit stronger than the iPhone is in terms of comparing the decibels, not the bars, since the iPhone is a little optimistic with the bars. And we'll just pick something off the front page here. It's over to high quality there. That's very good. That's the Google YouTube player. As you can hear, the speaker is pretty tinny. It's generally not very loud, like if you're using it for in-car navigation or as a speakerphone, but that was a particularly loud and noisy video, so it sounded louder than it is. Next, we'll take a look at the web browser, and we will go to... The web page, you can see this is HTC's keyboard here. They'd make a really good software keyboard, even using this in portrait mode on such a small screen. I find it quite usable. We're going to switch to landscape mode to get the bigger keyboard. And they have handy shortcuts like the dot com here. And if you press and hold on any one of these keys, you can get the secondary key without having to shift through your keyboard so you don't have to switch to the number mode, for example, to enter numbers. And there you have Google's usual excellent WebKit-based web browser. No problem, pinch zooming, and it's very fast. As I said before, the 600 megahertz CPU is really up to the job. I have no problem at all with performance on the phone, even with several applications running. In fact, right now, if we press and hold on the home button, you can see that we still have AT&T Navigator, AT&T Maps, Mobile Video, Stocks, YouTube, and the web browser running at once, and the phone is responsive. The ARIA comes with Quick Office, also for viewing Office documents, and it has a voice dialer, courtesy of Google and all of HTC's usual good sense applications. As we mentioned, you got Peep, you got Footprints in here, all of their widgets. It has an FM radio player, also has AT&T radio player. Voice quality on the phone is good for both incoming and outgoing calls, which means this is actually a good phone to use if you're one of those folks who makes phone calls. Data speeds are good on it. This is HSDPA 7.2 megabytes per second. It also has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and obviously a GPS. One thing I should mention that, like the Motorola backflip on AT&T, AT&T has for some reason decided to block the installation of non-market applications. Now, most of you average everyday users won't even notice the difference. You use Google Market to get your apps, and that's the way most folks do it. But for folks like us who actually test phones and test beta software, or for you more adventurous and geeky types, if you want to load something that's not on the market, it is blocked. You'll have to do that over USB using developer tools. Why AT&T does this, I don't know. It's not like there's rogue software running around out there that's not on the market. But they have indeed done that. But overall, the Aria is a very cute, very pocketable, durable, good voice phone on AT&T that's got the latest release of Google OS software since Froyo isn't quite out in release yet. With HTC Sense, it's a nice phone for $129. i am Lisa for Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review.